Lagos Business School, Pan Atlantic University. Recovery, corruption, everything you need to know, just everything but opportunities. But there are opportunities. People still make money day in, day out. Even within the middle of cyclical markets of volatility, people make money in, day in, day out, money is made. So what we'll do, um, the way we've ordered the presentation, is to just give a run through of all the things that has happened, so just a quick run through, just to expand a little bit more on what uh, KF, we call him KF popularly in the office anyway, so he's not Mr. Fallow. As <laughs> so it's just compact five, five outline, executive summary, just update of Q1, which as he said, is mostly tales of doom or gloom. Let me put it that way, not doom, just very gloomy picture. Inflation on the rise, uh, currency disparities about say, over 60% between parallel market and CBN, if you turn on CNN, the first thing that comes to your screen is a picture of a dead child or a bomb happening somewhere. Even our own, even our own locals, local channels, just about bombing here, bombing, that's what they start the news with. But money is being made, so, and that's why we are here. So we'll just spend a little bit of time talking about all those tales of gloom, but we'll quickly extract the, opportun um, the uh, um, investment opportunities in there, and we'll expand on them. And that's where we'll spend more time. I think we... We are targeting about 40 minutes in total. So let's spend about seven to eight minutes talking about those quick things. And we'll spend bulk of our time talking of how to make money, which is why we are all here. Yeah? This is very wordy. So I'll just run through it quickly. Like KF says, major themes, everything in climate, all through 2015, the same themes are still rocking. There's still fear about potential rates in the US. I mean, I, I was just passing by and the reception, and I saw Janet Yellen on the TV screen yesterday. I had to stop, though I was rushing to, because it matters. Whatever she says will matter in terms of um, direction of flow of capital, maybe from the US here or vice versa. Concerns about China's growth, but domestically, I mean, fragile area, all the things KF said, but domestically, things are not really changing either. Security, oil, currency, the same things we talked about last year, still happen over Q1 and are still happening uh, at the moment. Like I said, key, key, um, indicative, um, indica key indicators, not 62% variance between CB and parallel market quotes. Internally displaced person, I think that's about the new, new business for those supplying tapolins and rice bags now. Internally displaced persons, they keep rising every day. Now, but beyond this, there are certain triggers we expect to happen, which should happen in the economy. But where will you be when those triggers happen? Will it be on the sidelines still waiting, as we've been reading in so many reports and the face of daily newspapers, or you will be in a position to take advantage of those opportunities, or you'll be in those opportunities so you can just take all of the advantage, all the upside of it. So that's what we spend most of our time talking about. I wasn't sure if LBS will allow maybe branding collateral, so I just sneaked this in to part of our presentation and quickly describe ourselves, uh, wholly owned subsidiary of Greeny Trust Limited and registered SEC and all of that. So moving along, global market review, right? global market, US Fed rate high, rebound in all prices, um, record low about February. Now just burying our head in the sand and think, oh yeah, the whole world is doom and gloom because um, there's no job, there's no need paying my students school fees because there's no job for them to do when they come out. There are opportunities because other markets are getting out of it and that's what we'll spend most of our time talking about today. Now this is on the global markets in terms of equities. This shows even on worldwide, it's about flat. As at the end of Q1, we're about 11.7 loss. Um, as at yesterday, it was about 13, maybe 13 and a half or thereabouts. So it's not like you're so far from others that have recorded 12, 15, 7% losses. Now let's come home. GDP, just as he said, I'm talking about a 75 and a half percent um, shave on that. It is no surprise. We're largely dependent on all these things we know. So let's not spend time on the rhetoric. There was oil receipts went down. That's where it's not a new thing. So that's why we put oil prices right next to it. You can see the movement all the way from here. And about here, that's when it was trading about 114. Now all of a sudden, you are back down here. We expanded that. But since December, 6.22% up until 
Q1 up until 31st March. But as I reflected in our foreign reserves, let's just jump to foreign reserve. Foreign reserves is down, minus 4.16 over the same quarter. Before, it was a sharp a correlation between oil receipts, I mean from um, receipts from oil exports and the foreign reserves. But now, what we see, you have oil price going up and reserves going down. These are the times we find ourselves. Um, but like I said, instead of just focusing on the doom and gloom, we'll talk about a pictorial of how it affect. Okay, just standing, stand towards you affecting government spending in the economy. Because you need money to still do some basic things, whether or not oil receipts come, you still have to provide some economic and social infrastructure. Government borrowing will go up, like just as we expect it to go up now. Um, foreign exchange will now become subject because you don't, because of this, oil revenues going down, your reserves going down, it impacts the foreign exchange. Because of all of this, inflation goes up because this directly affects inflation. We're an import-driven economy, most, mostly. So that's why, at the moment, a lot of us in this room and outside, we're still at that shift. At the shift of accepting that you might have to suck on an orange instead of buying a just juice pack. We are still at that shift. So let's, let's be very practical. It's really expected. Everybody will kick and scream, but we are at that shift. So that's why people now, it is the most common language you hear people say now is, it is well. Now there are some things that are almost inelastic. I was giving an example of Choco Pops. Choco Pops, all of us, most of us know it. I, mean, I didn't drink Choco Pops when I was growing up. I took probably pap or yam. I can't remember what my mother fed me with. But Choco Pops used to cost about maybe 1,300. So, Choco Pops, like how much does it cost now? Okay, it costs at least 15% more. I can give my son Milo cereal, which as at the last time I bought was, no, no, Milo, yes, the, the Milo cereal. The Milo, Milo is like, just like Cocoa Pops. But because we are so driven by request and the thirst for um, imported goods, that thing is sweeter because I taste it. I used to have to taste my children. It, it used to cost about 600. Now, it's, I'm a very, very informed father. <laughs> so now it costs a slightly more. That is elasticity and substitution effect. I was now asking Chica, who has been taking a good chunk of my salary? Because she works with, I'm sure everybody knows, Lucozet Ribina. What is the substitution for Lucozet Ribina? Zobo drink? You won't do that. So anyway, just to let you know, so there are some other things in your household, in your investment, in your outlook, you're already making substitutions. You're already considering, you're already realigning. You may not know it. Don't worry, by June, you will know. Yeah? It's not a forecast of doom. It is not a matter of it as well. Let's be practical with, it, with ourselves. Now, this is another story. This is currency over the last five years. And we expanded just this tip here. This is currency over the last quarter. Dollar exchanges now for an average. Um, there's one, um, now the um, parallel market even has an, should I call it informal, database called Aboki FX. I only find out. Uh, sorry, anyone familiar with that? Are you know that. On Aboki FX, this is 320, 321. On CBN website, 197. I almost um, got my, I would call it, almost got myself jailed because I, I was doing a transaction for a client a couple of months ago. That's when it was still unclear, 186 or 1 something. So I did a very huge model Six, six sheets, and everything was based on CBN. Thankfully, I ran it by a superior when I was working in my former company, and that's when I knew that things were not really well. So that this is disparity, there's 60% parallel. So by one of the tests of this, in reality, for all of us that, that dread traveling around May, June, let's go to the airport this May, June. Let's see how many people are there, yeah? There will still be people because we are still trying to make that change. You understand? People now fund those, those travel, those luxuries with borrowings because they are still available. Reserves down. Now, inflation, 
if we check, um, there's been talk about since um, quarter three, I think we spent like nine minutes already. I'm really conscious of time, so we'll spend more time on the meat of the matter. About quarter three, we're always saying that, oh, inflation, um, what was being given as um, single digit wasn't real, wasn't sustainable, that by Q1, by Q1, we'll get to early double digits, i.e. 10%. What did we close it? 12.8. In the daily spend of the bulk of the index, the people that spend more, bulk of this money, what are the major things? Bread, rice, Gary, those are in the food basket. How many of us, for fitness, not for health, for fitness reasons, take all of these things more than twice a week or thrice a week or every day as it is? But the people that spend on them, that feel the pinch more, are the ones that are about 70% of the economy. And they've seen inflation on these things, average of between 12 to 15% on this direct food material. For a long time, one of the significant components in terms of movement in inflation was luxury goods, i.e., I'll call it i.e., champagne. When I was growing up, I don't know, when I was still little, they used to wear ashwabi for all of us. On the table, it's on the, only on the chairman's table you had just juice. Then, Coke used to be served in a van outside. It is only the homoloku or the bride that will go and collect that Coke. But what do you have now? Wines on the table. I mean, you wouldn't even touch them. You wait for the bottler of all bottlers. Not to bring you a moe, I mean, what do you do? Maybe a rosé you'll consider, but you now wait ace of spade, 80 grand, 245 grand. And those are the things we spend a lot of money on. But so it has now caught up on us. But because we are still making that shift, energy cost is another thing. Tariff, I, I bet everyone in this room, you've seen the repricing of your bill. They sent me a 114,000 bill the other day, and I had to check my house again whether I was milling something. I wrote them, yes, please write them. Just this is a part of the, once you see any anomaly in bill, just write, it, it will help. It has helped me, so I'm a testifier. <laughs> Rise in energy costs, cost of importation, we are still importing. People still eat baked beans, because they've been eating baked beans and sausages for breakfast, the kids wouldn't have something else. <laughs> no, don't worry, it is pinching, but you haven't just felt it. No, no, it is, it is pinching, but you haven't just felt it. The now it is still marginal increase to your income. But you know there's something I tag. Um, if I may add, where is Ms. Bumi? I've been trying to get into your program for a doctorate. Now I'm starting to doctor myself at home. There's something called dependency index, as made popular by me. I don't think I've read it in any textbook. In Nigeria, because of virtue of our culture, you know, it's just like uh, HSBC, International Bank Local Knowledge. We help people. We are more face to face, we are in tune with others. If your cousin loses a job, whether you know it or you realize it or not, your income has been decimated. They haven't just brought the invoice to you, but it's decimated. So be very clear. So what you think you are earning now, and again, earnings power is not as strong as it was before. So all this will still dovetail. All these are just more tales of gloom. So by the time I come with the opportunities, it will excite you. So don't worry, but you are still feeling this, by the way, don't worry. Dependency index, when you have your own money, 100 naira, you are on your own. Inflation has hit. 100 naira, in terms of purchasing power parity, has now turned to 90 naira. On paper, you still have 100 naira. In value, you have 90 naira. Now your cousin, third cousin, who has now lost the job in Abuja for a total a reason not your fault, or probably not his fault, now sends a message to you. He's not going to send a message with the view of the value of money. He's going to send a message to you with the view of the value of quantity of goods you'll get. So that's another way to look at it. If you haven't thought deep, so deep about this inflation, that's another way I've been seeing it, and I think it's practical for us to look at it. So by, that's why by the time you give some people 10,000, the, the response is that, well, I might have to give a more theatrical side. I was speaking to you about it. They'll say, Kini Mufe Fiche. What do I want to do with it? What is it? Still 10,000 out of your own income, or maybe 100,000. Yeah? So, rise in foreign exchange costs, rise in cost of importation, rise in energy costs, rise in transportation costs. And culturally, um, because of the mentality, things that are not meant to be passed on, especially because of this. You can imagine a Baba 
telling you that it will collect 500 instead of 200 because dollar. But it happens. It does happen. During occupying Nigeria, I was stuck in um, Amsterdam and I saw a Nigerian news, local channel in Amsterdam, saying of a woman that was being interviewed who sells yams, saying, they just started this strike two days ago. How come it has affected yam? But those are the times we are in. There is a provision for recovery from corruption. It is written there. Go to Budge IT. Is is that is put in diagram clean little diagram for you to know how cheap is ahead? They've even diagramized it, so no, no problem. Budget, we are still here. I heard uh, over the news that uh, Senator Bukola Saraki yeah. said all is well with it. Was it Fred? It it was or it will be. I've heard it will be twice. Yes, I've heard it too. Okay, you know, this is, I don't want to dwell on this because this is one of the sore areas. We can waste a lot of time. But budget, we're still where we are. What is today? 20, today is Thursday. Tomorrow is 29. I mean, we spend a third of the year. All right? So when does this thing kick in? Well, all of you have drivers. I can see it from your faces. You even wonder why it's not back quick from the fuel station. People like us drive. So this thing is biting hard, more for the common man. Energy, I mean, that goes without saying. What has been happening to the markets, the conventional markets? All of this, I'll say you are familiar with, but one quick question. Like I said, this is not about pushing diagrams, statistics, and everything you have been seeing in your professional, personal field, in your faces, but let's extract some value out of it. Or so, let's draw some helpful inferences. This is 11%. This is the NPR. It jumped to 12% only when? Last month. And this jump is 9.1%. If you have fixed deposits with a bank, have they repriced your assets? So if you are getting, even if they reprice your assets to 12%, what is inflation? Then what's your real rate of return? Negative. God bless you. We've been here before. So let me not paint, overpaint the picture. At least so we know. So you have T-bills, 91 days, um, three-month deposits. Bond index, of course, has been, has been soaring. Why? Because of the yield. Because the closest you can get, well, the farthest you can move away from negative real return is lending to government. And it's... It's not surprising, should it be? Because here, we said government borrowing will go up. So it's not surprising. So let's not look at ah, 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 things that are now expensive. No. Look at this diagram. Uh, maybe I think we'll make arrangements for it to be central. So to remind you, so all of these things, the reason why we're professionals, we're having this kind of discussion, so we are better prepared for the days ahead. And we take opportunities for now. <coughs> so it would be um, unhelpful if we know all this, have this information, and we still don't do anything about it. And we still act as surprised as the man that never had the benefits of having this discussion. Well, you know the story. Equities markets. Yes, I hear. Hmm. Especially uh, uh, people that were involved in the market around 2006, 2007. A lot of uh, private placements and all of that. But Wait a minute, we just talked about other markets. Everybody, V, right? Everybody is bouncing because I had the option, we had the option of just putting all of this to show everybody's negative, negative. But let's even see how they moved. V, 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 V. And fast forward to Nigeria. Our own V is just a bit wobbly, but we are still making the, we are still making the V. I'll come to this. I'll talk. I'll come back to this diagram when we talk. When we get to the selected um, investment opportunities. Now, what is new? I think we're like uh, we're doing good with time. About, I think, 13 minutes now. So, what is new? There is a shift in the contribution to GDP. Traditionally, it's always been agri, majorly terms of contribution, and that's not far-fetched. Anyway, things have changed. It's nothing new. I've been listening to change in contribution, pattern of growth to GDP 
at least over the last two years. Mr. I, I bet you will, you will agree with me. I need some of your insights, in, especially GDP contribution. Things that my stay UK, maybe 2003, 2004, Nigerian film industry has been really prominent. Really prominent. So those, those are the things that have diluted the effects of agri. So we showed it on the next slide. As of 2010, agri was about 41% contribution. Now it's only 24.18. So those are things that we clearly see. And this is not just mere statistics. We are talking about what we do every day. Let's think through it. Before um, contract signing on mobile phones really became popular, because at some point when it first started, it was just a what 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 you, what you the, um, the Christians would call a canker worm. They just give you a bill, hundred and four thousand. You even know that you haven't made only two calls, but you spend a lot on communication. Thank God that there's now data. You spend more time chatting. And those ones have even watered down their income by providing call services on data. I had this conversation with MTN when they were, when they were called, they called investors together to explain that they won't be listing in 20, 2011, 2010, and that they won't be returning money. They made us do some valuation. And then I knew EMTS, Etisalat, had come. I knew their focus. And I knew the major, I knew statistics are abound every day. So this speaks to businesses. All of this we have learned. Let it not be one of it as well. Apply it to your businesses and your personal finances and your investments, which is what we make money. So they came and they were talking about, oh, this is how much you make, how much you make. And the only question I had, which I won't say I was shut down, I think I was politely ignored, was how much investment were you making towards data? Data drives everything emails, social media, even now voice calls are done on data. I mean, speaking to people in London couldn't have been easier. You just call them on Facebook or WhatsApp. And there's the, for people, the rich people, care if I won't look at you that has two iPhones, for people that has iPhones, there's face, FaceTime or FaceChat, won't you? So it just makes, so that's data. But here we are now. I'm not saying anything about the fine. This is just where we are in terms of revenue from that. So things have really changed. From here, agriculture was here, mining and querying. So this presents new opportunities. Now, we are now starting to get into areas of opportunities, so where we'll spend a bit more time. One of the, the resounding thing that comes from the government, especially when it comes to revenue, is one key word, diversification. We all hear that. It's on the news, it's on the TV, it's on our Blackberries and everything. But diversify into what? What catchment areas are readily available? We'll be, they, so let's be very clear. A lot of you saying that to say diversifying into agri. Agri has been a huge contributor already. But it's just to make sure the benefits reach everybody and to monetize that. So they are not just diversifying. We have more than enough farmers. You might need to want to drive along Jebel Road and all of that, even Oshun State. Just a vast mass of land. And they are able-bodied young men. I, I listened to, I think on the news, that the president was even saying um, young men in the IDPs should be sent to the farms. Not sent, but they should be encouraged. So that's the politically correct language, to go into farming. So that means there's a lot of, there's a lot of activity into there. But one other area that is readily available, so it's a matter of like there's a well, is the strength of your bucket and ability of the man to draw. Mining, it is so easy. You know you have deposits. So this is not a matter of everybody lock us up in a room, pray for Nigeria, let there be deposits. There is ore. There is limestone. People use it. We import steel sheets in this country. Don't ask me a question about Jakarta or any steel rolling stuff. So there are different value chains. So that's one area, don't you think? One of the significant spends in here is going to go into infrastructure. Infrastructure will affect everybody. Will affect everyone I mean, in the roads. But then infrastructure could be split into two, don't you think? Economic and social. You've been having hospitals. They'll build more. But what will they build on? They won't build it out of rafts. It will be built with cement blocks. How many cement companies do you have in Nigeria? How many prominent those do we remember? Please let's make it interactive. So it's not like Dangone Cement, Lafarge. The men needs to produce. 
Limestone. limestone. So what sector does limestone come from? To so who he has ears, let him hear. So there are opportunities that are being created already. So the point of this meeting, the main point, is to identify the You'll be covered in suits, as in you'll be white as sheets. Because people are mining the thing, it's dusty all over the whole place. So this thing is abundant, right? As at the last count, I don't know how much gold in terms of weight we have. We have so many, maybe like 50 metric tons or something really huge in this country. So there's an opportunity in there. It contributed, the, the solid mineral sector. So now, if you're looking for sake of comparison, mining, you have to be careful in terms of for the statisticians or the analysts amongst us, or people who want to go into that, because the analysts and the statisticians will know how to decipher. Mining used to be just bunched up into um, solid minerals and liquid. So liquid, don't get it twisted, is oil and gas and all the things that have bought us this goodness, to say the least. But the other ones are the hard, hard ones. It will interest you that if you look at the top producing miners, successful ones in this country, I'm not sure they have any Nigerian on the board. Go figure. So, potential three million jobs. You need to look, maybe go to the website of Mines and Steel or Solid Mineral. You know that there are a lot of artisanal miners, people that just do it. Uh, all of us have seen um, uh, blood diamonds before. All those things, I see them sieving. It goes on in this country in huge chunks. So it, it's producing, it's providing jobs. But what we didn't, do we need to do to harness those jobs? Put them in the tax, tax net. Has anybody been harassed? Well, I don't know if you do individual business. Harassed by tax, I mean tax officers lately. I haven't heard it has now gone to a new level. That all these house girls we sent to buy Ugu, somebody will just jump, hey, stop there, where's your tax card? <laughs> I heard it's gone to that level now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nobody has witnessed it. Uh, maybe they are giving me fake gist. But I don't think it's fake gist. Because they showed up to a friend of mine who has a shop in Sura, minding in his business, and he does data, um, data stuff. And he just showed and came with a tax bill of 257000 He's been arguing with them forever. And one woman now called him that you are arguing. You won't have a business. What does that mean in English? Maybe they'll come steal the premises. We are not allowed to do. Probably if they want to get more visuals, they'll put padlock around it. And they'll block you from filing any returns. What do you want to do in Nigeria now that I don't need tax? If, I mean, team number. Anyway, go figure. We talked about this as well. But agri, like I said, we are now living just mere contribution for sustenance. Yeah? What we've been doing, of course, we've been contributing a lot. We've been producing a lot of... Does anyone remember the cassava bread? Made popular by... God bless you. By show of hands, real quick, has anyone ever eaten a cassava bread? Not tasted, because some of you go to all these, um, what do you call it, exhibition, and you just take one crumb and, and just go on. Has anyone even tasted it before? You have? Eating. The first time I ever tasted it was when I went to IITA in Ibadan. Um, when the, I didn't know, that's another thing, um, what do you call it, uh, hospitality industry. You wouldn't know, all of us spend money, go to Glasgow and go and sleep in one cottage, bread and breakfast, they would just fry two eggs and three slices of bread. Oyibo will ask you, in Nigeria, culture, you say, do you want some biscuits? Oyibo will ask you, would you like a biscuit? Respect yourself and take one. <laughs> yeah, it is, it is true. So now, let's move on real quick. Um, we're getting shit close to our time. Key triggers, you know I mentioned at the opening side, there are some key triggers we expect to happen. And in, the, in one religious side, we are praying to happen. Rebound in oil prices, has it started happening? Yes. Yeah. Before it goes, went to 46, as a Q1, it had gone 6.22%. So please encourage me by clapping, at least one of my predictions have come up. If that is sustained, you know, one thing is it happening, another thing is it being sustained. What is our budget benchmark for oil? God. So how much are we above 38 now? Nine dollars. Could someone quickly work out the percentage difference? What? Anyone? Just, just a quick, even if it's a rough, it doesn't have to be exact. 
24%. So we are 24% above it was years, let him hear. Things may turn around. It's been on, at least it's not, the, uh, the statistic you gave about $46, it's not that it's just turned $46. It's been sustaining on an upward trajectory for four months. Will we say we didn't know? So let's come back to what will happen. What will happen to it? 90% of the total export revenue comes from it. So if it's going to shoot up from there, it will reflect revenue. Please, um, I'll just quickly take you back to this. Please try to, let me give two seconds for you to quickly look at this relationship so you can start to tie it in, all in for yourself. Oil price, in fact, revenue, exports. Um, so, if, so just imagine this arrow going the other way around. So all the other arrows that come in the same direction go the other way around. So if this goes up, all revenues go up, exports go up, um, government spending go up, government borrowing go down, um, foreign exchange rates stabilize. There's no, that's why I put no error there. Inflation, I'll put question mark. Yeah? Cost of capital, question mark as well. It should, in theory, but it should. That's why I said, I gave that um, cost of capital and interest obtained. When NPR, which is meant to be the lead indicative rate, jumps by 9.1%, in your individual, in your businesses, in your deposits, the daily price by 9.1%. So that's why I put that question back. These are practical things, so just not theory. So GDP growth rate should. Thank you for being participative. So 90%, 70% of government revenue, our dollar benchmark, we established at $38, and we're looking to sustain at 2.16. Yeah, I heard of a couple of bombings by the Niger Delta guys, but I think they respect themselves. Now they just bomb small, just to tax and just fit. If you have a suitable, I use the word suitable, foreign exchange policy, it will ease capital flow, right? I had um, someone traveled out of this country, was going to buy gold in Italy, stopped over in Dubai, and had a layover for two days just to buy some gold. By the time she flew to Italy, they had limited her card spend to $300. And this is somebody that was willing to, that was going to spend $29,000. Is it that she will be withdrawing 3300 and run hotel bills? So those are things that are, are happening and they're affecting all of us, yeah? And affecting our businesses. People that want to transfer cash, but let's go on quickly. Um, fair current assets, asset prices. It will, so if this happens, these two will follow. And it will help us avoid these two things. This has happened on like two or three occasions, correct? Now, our prognostications, this is just forecast, just one big English, just say. GDP. G did you catch that? So I decided not to read. The cumulative impact of delayed government spending and cost push inflation, stronger US um, versus Naira, rising cost of energy is expected to reduce GDP um, product. Barry Wendy's headwinds are abated. Some of them are being, uh, should be abated. Remember the diagram we showed. If oil is increasing, that means our revenue is increasing. Our foreign reserves should be strengthened. That means potentially our uh, Naira should be stronger. So that means some, uh, some abatement is coming. Foreign exchange rate stability, like I said, if that happens, that will come into here. And um, the president flew to um, China just recently. So now, most of the imports, most people that go through Dubai, now, Dubai has stopped, well, from my own informal statistics, has stopped being maybe like the main destination hub. It's a pass-through to China. So most of these guys you see wearing shorts and the trainers, they're actually going to China. And what they used to do was buy dollars to buy yen. But if that is freely convertible, it will solve a lot of problems. So there will be no so much pressure on the dollar. Fixed income. The government we borrow, we've established that based on that um, diagram. Equities, it's been weak, 11.7 down, quarter one. There's even no catalyst that we see. Some results were good, some results were bad, they pay some dividend. Some people are taking the dividend and at the same time cursing the MD of the bank. It is fine. <laughs> yeah, all of us, it is fine, but it is where we are. Now, this is where we should spend the next 10 minutes. What do we see? We are looking at being practical, safety, liquidity, and actually taking investment opportunities. So first thing, we say keep near cash investment instruments, 
fixed deposits, treasury bills. Why? Because we see that as we talk progressively, just like when I started with my preamble, more distressed assets are actually coming to the market. We see them already. More distressed assets are actually, they are even around you. When it starts from people saying, I even want to sell my car, that's a distressed asset. Yes. Okay, you can't hear me. More distressed assets are coming to the market for sale. Yeah. So when it starts, then that's why I put across all income and assets classes. Income classes mean it doesn't matter. It could be your driver that wants to sell his Okada to someone next door. That's it. And it doesn't have to be there because he wants to pay a debt. It's just realigning priorities. Reprioritization. You already are reprioritizing. Okay, you give me your car and I'll give you my generator. That's better than by old age. But if you keep cash, all these things we are advising, if you want to open an account with me, what you do transfer. You won't transfer narco shares for me too because you want to buy GTV. So it's because cash is king. So how do you keep the cash? Don't, I don't think you should keep it in current account. It doesn't make sense. How much do they pay you? They pay you little or nothing. And now you even get 50 naira charge and 150 naira for transfer. But if you keep it, so next, what are the other options? In uh, savings accounts, what do they pay you for that? These days, 3%. So it's even conditional. But there are other things you could put your money in. Treasury bills, and even you could do term deposits. If you do term deposits, it's easily liquidable. So don't put your money in something that will tie you down. Okay, it's safe, it's due. But when you need the money, you still have to go around in circles. These are like examples of rates. This is 91 day um, that treasury bills across different tenors. Now, why I didn't extend this to banks? Because it's subjective based on your negotiation ability and your global pool of funds. Yeah? So I hope, I hope we all get that so we can move on. Because this is the main meat of um, why we all gathered here. Fixed income securities. Let's not be just theoretical about it. From that diagram, which we showed earlier, we said government borrowing will come. The government has always borrowed. I mean, by default, they will still borrow. But we said, critically, government will borrow. What do we see? Now, this is just between 31st of March. This, this line here, yeah, is the yield curve as of 1st of April. So, let, the do you know, let me tell you the implication of this is in this table. Two years, paper, the price has changed by 82, 82 cobble. Now, look that all the way down. Some people have made 5,927 cobble, 5,929 between 1st of April and 22nd of April. And most of us are still here saying the country is bad. No money is not flowing. Money is flowing, only that you are not part of that bus. Yeah? Now, we see growing yields across all maturities of sub bond does increase in our attraction to current price level. Do you know what could change this to this? When government gets so much, let's say oil, by way of hope and peace and positive confession, just as my pastor says, it gets to $90. $90. Where will your assets be? You are, not you are not here. You are neither here nor here. You are still part of those... Um, saying, oh yeah, things are bad, nothing is moving. But where will you be when this line comes down here? Do you know what this means? Now there's an inverse relationship. Sorry, I was just assuming too much. When yields increase, that means prices are falling. It's just an inverse. Because when you have, you want to borrow aggressively, you don't mind, you just need, my car is bad on the road, just give me 10,000, I'll give you 12,000. But when it's just like, uh, the car is bad, but AA is coming to tow it, but one tow truck comes, okay? Following 10,000, but I don't, I don't know. Maybe I'll give you 10,000 and 50 naira. You're not under any pressure. When all money comes, the government will be under less pressure. That means people that have been here, people that have been here or here, because this line, when more money comes, they won't need to borrow more. Yields will come down. So this thing will reverse. If you're not there, you won't be there. It will just be theory to, to you if you're not in there. Now, I read something quite alarming, and from what you would call or you term beer parlor politics, 20 billion held in dumb accounts. And you hear various sort of reasons that who owns it? It's because of BVN, it's the people that stole money. Brethren, if I may call you that, people hold cash assets in dollars in this country. 
But instead, if you do, because I, I, I'm looking at a lot of you, you are saving money for June travel. Instead of just doing and holding it, I mean, anything could happen to you. At some point, you couldn't withdraw across the counter, which wasn't no fault of yours. You took money to the bank or you couldn't get it out. They are paying you 2%. If you threaten the bank you want to withdraw, maybe they'll increase it to 5%. There are already instruments, euro bonds, that are available, trading. But it depends on liquidity. But if liquidity, I think the minimum lot is about $200,000. Why don't you call people? That's, why, that's one of the benefits of this kind of class. People of like minds. And you pull and you take advantage of those kind of assets. These are the kind of assets. Now imagine, we went back and we said, oh, on um, T-bills, you are getting across this in Naira terms. In Euro bonds, look at yields, 15 some cases, seven in dollar terms. So those are one of some investment opportunities we might look at. Now, like I said, um, equity, I think our time is done, and we're about the last, second boss, last slide. I don't know if you plead with Ms. Ojo to give me two more minutes, so I'll just work in. Okay. Equity assets, like I said, I'll give you a practical example. I spoke to two clients, not just two, Okay, so I speak with many clients. <laughs> I spoke to two clients. One is very informed. Actually, is in the center of um, equities arrangement. That, oh, I want to take over your um, portfolio. And one of the little recommendations I had was to do opportunistic trades. And I'll sell your GTB assets. If it didn't flare up, it rudely declined. That's the politically correct language. But I took another client asset. So what's the difference between the two? I saw the wave of the market. I saw GTB, 1640. Three weeks later, three weeks or there about later, I was buying the same GTB at 139. Did I still qualify for the dividend? By the grace of God, yes. Did I still make some spread? Yes, I did. Reading the market, speak to the right people. Don't just be totally averse. Now, this is why I brought this graph up. Market has done, if anybody was to show you They'll just show you this graph, and all you see is a decline. Well, let's see what caused the decline. January was bad, and we've been spending the rest of the months for the quarter trying to catch up with it. Is it our fault that January was bad? It is not just our fault. It is across the whole globe. Look at this. Everybody was suffering it. This period, this period, this period, this period. You get what I mean? So let's look for the right reasons and take investment opportunities when they are available. Within this market, it's not good, it's not good. Just like I made an example, people collected dividends and still cost the bank MDs. If you are one of them, please repent. What happened in January? Everybody spent half of the, um, a popular man spent half of Vanguard and half of business day insulting the president. Everybody was saying, Baba, go slow and all of that. Um, there was a lot of capital flight. A lot of people took their money out of the country. It will have effects. This is the effect. And we spent most of our time catching up with it. So equities is not entirely to be thrown away. There's opportunity. Money is being made in this market. I just gave you an example, real life. I can't just tell you the person's name. 7% within three and a half weeks within a banking stock, which I dare say has been one of the most run because it's the most liquid. Sector-specific investment opportunities. We've talked about, not too long ago, about the shift in GDP, government's focus, and how we could draw a line about the budgetary spend would translate into investment into some certain sectors, certain stocks, certain areas. But increasingly, please take note of this, increasingly there are companies, industries, manufacturing concerns that are starting to manufacture and backwardly integrate into locally produced Agric, agric, um, agric materials. Somebody's got, to, company's got to buy them. Somebody's got to produce them. So now it is now being selective of what part of the value chain you want to get in, what you want to get involved in. If you're going into animal husbandry, do you want to do it into the input? Are you going to be the one supplying the chicks? Is that what you want to do? Not the risk, but I'm saying there's value here. All of a sudden, why does it catch anyone's curiosity? Why the president sent his wife? I won't say why the wife went. Why the president sent his wife to go and open Erisco's tomato plant in Lagos? She came from Abuja. Does it catch, catch anyone's curiosity? That man loads are here, because I've not spoken to the management myself, minimum of 20 to 25 tomato-laden trucks 
all the way from the north down to Nigeria. We've heard, Dangote announced, so it's not, I'm giving you prior under G News. It was in the paper that it started a tomato processing plant. Have you eaten that Dangote tomato um, before? Because it's still being planted with specific seeds, which he's handing out to people to farm them. When he now starts producing, okay, ha, ah, this man, Sha. And the most popular thing everybody says is government is favoring him. How will government favor him? That's the largest employer of labor outside government. <laughs> He has, he has forecasted something. When he said he was going into refinery and oil, all of us were here. The man raised money, almost like maybe 500 or something billion dollars. We are still here talking about it. He has said and announced two, three years ago that he's going into tomato processing. We made noise then. We've forgotten over the last two years. He will now come up and we make money. We'll start wondering. Mining, like I said, make money. There, um, I wouldn't be surprised <coughs> if there are investment vehicles, funds, the government had even said they will launch um, or create some vehicle for infrastructure and mining. So where do you want to be? So you might want to start holding um, ready assets concerning that. So in a nutshell, so we'll spend more time on question and answers. That is my presentation to you all. Lagos Business School, Pan-Atlantic University.